Uh, today, with this presentation, we will cover a new tools that we introduce uh, in uh, Map Store, uh, in particular in the 3D environment. Uh, oh, this one, yeah. Uh, before to start with the tool itself, uh, what's MapStore? MapStore is a framework, WebJS framework, that by itself provides a um, product that is a WebJS that you can access through the browser. Uh, today we will see mainly the Map Viewer, so uh, the application that allows you to compose uh, through layers uh, a map visualization. Currently there are three main implementations in MapStore, Open Layers, Leaflet and Cesium.js. Uh, the one that we will focus today is Cisium.js and the functionality that we introduced uh, with the latest plugin. So, improvement done uh, on the 3D side. The update of the Cisium library to the latest uh, releases to add support of 3D tiles, uh, in particular also 3D tiles related to the uh, Google Photorealistic 3D tiles uh, um, provider. This map views uh, that it's a tool that allows you to uh, apply some different, let's say, views to the map. So you can move the camera, select a views, and then build a sort of uh, a sequence of uh, an urban environment. Then we introduce also the 3D measurement tools for the 3D uh, part, that this uh, is sort of uh, a, um, Used in between, uh, it could be used in between these views just to have uh, some of uh, uh, more information of the feature that you have inside the map. Uh, styling of data vector data client side, this is a key point also for the use of 3D model combined with 3D tiles because sometimes you will need to uh, have, for example, a new project that you want to display in a 3D tile that it's the current uh, situation. You want to show what will be in the future, so we introduce the way to uh, apply a style to a vector layer, a point, and you can replace this with a, a building that it could be a model. And this brings us to the GLTF, that it's an extension, that it's the extension for 3D model that we currently support. So if you want to test uh, these 3D views, uh, you could uh, Go to our repository, and it's just to have a test. Uh, here there is the uh, link to the re latest releases. Uh, there you will find a zip folder with a binary, uh, and inside this binary there is uh, two files, one for Windows and one for Linux, that you can start and try the application. Alternatively, if you have uh, on Mac OS, you can use from the readme of the repo, uh, find uh, the Docker uh, the Docker um, instruction to set up and start the project. Once you start the application and uh, you go to create a new map, uh, you will find uh, this visualization. Uh, and if you want to enable the tree view, you need to click at the bottom, there is a toolbar with the 3D uh, icon. Uh, this will switch from open layers to Cesium and uh, then you can uh, select the button in the sidebar, the last one, uh, there is an eye with the two arrow. Uh, and this one will bring up the, uh, on the left, top left, sorry here, uh, toolbar. And uh, this toolbar is these uh, views tools. The workflow of, this of the views, so how you can set up. You can move the camera around by moving the mouse and uh, find your location. Then by clicking the plus button, you will add a new, uh, so you will create your view. So at that point, uh, it's like a, a sort of, uh, uh, yeah, it, it memorizes the position inside the map configuration. Uh, and those tools are enabled. There is uh, the first part uh, that it's related to um, the editing of uh, the view, because the, it's possible to add uh, a new thing that we will talk later, but it's also possible to navigate uh, through each view that you create. So create a new, new one, and then you can edit. Here are the edit options. So once you edit uh, what you need, you can also decide that to, sh to show only one layer that is inside the map, then the second view, another layer to show maybe a, um, a sort of sequence of events and not only the um, current situation of the map. Uh, then when you create a new one, you start again. 
plus we'll add a new uh, view and you will have these uh, visualizations. For the editing part, uh, we introduce uh, um, this different way to, um, I mean, represent this view and also explain what's the content. Uh, the first uh, part that you could edit is the description. It's a rich text uh, editor. You can add also embed video or images or describe what it's inside or what we are seeing. Uh, we introduce also the, the possibility to uh, review the position of the camera. So you can change view, then click on the button, the green button below to get the new one, or by typing in the input, you can decide which is the camera position by lat latitude, longitude, and height, and the target position. So you can um, fine tune in the uh, configuration. Uh, animation, uh, it's called animation that represents a transition in between views because when you navigate with the tool on the right, uh, there is a play button and you can decide if you want a smooth transition or uh, go in between this view uh, right away. There is a second, time, uh, second um, time gap that you can decide. Uh, we introduced the possibility to apply mask to 3D tiles. Uh, in uh, urban planning, we noticed that some requirement was to have these 3D tiles. Usually, you don't update frequently that. So we will need to represent something new. And uh, we introduced the possibility to use a vector layer to put on top like polygons on the 3D tiles and then hide the part that you don't need. So this is done client side by mixing these two sources. And here you can decide if you want to revert uh, the, the clipping, so only a, a place or multiple places are represented or to get the holes or, or the place that you want to fill with your content. Uh, we introduce also the possibility to apply globe translucency uh, to the decision library behind. Uh, this was useful when uh, there was uh, um, the needs to explain something that goes underground or underwater. So new construction, uh, for example, the, a tunnel, a submarine tunnel, or the subway. Uh, if you want to represent something below, we needed a, a way to um, sort of also by distance to display what is behind the hurt or the water surface. And this allows in the specific view to apply these options. Uh, finally, once uh, inside the MapIver map store can add uh, uh, all the layer that uh, they want, uh, and those will be in a table of content. But here for each view, you can decide to, uh, for example, uh, uh, turn off the visibility of some of them or turn on the visibility, the opacity, and uh, alternatively, an alternative to the uh, mask system is the clipping system uh, that could be also applied to the terrain, both terrain and 3D tiles. So the clip means that you can also cut uh, a portion of uh, 3D tiles and terrain. Uh, this is, there is an edge case that you can use mask and edge case that you can use the clip. So we introduce both uh, to allow the user to decide what uh, they prefer. Here's some example that uh, we uh, built with MapStore. Uh, the first one, uh, the topic is a new project for urban planning. Uh, with the city of Genova, um, they had some new project in the city and they want to describe what will happen and what will change in the urban environment. Here we get some of those uh, main, uh, let's say, points that will change and something also about historical data. Here in this view, there is the, um, the, the red line represent the new uh, submarine tunnel that they wanted to represent. And uh, the yellow line represent two um, landmark in the city. One is the lighthouse and the other side there is the new waterfront that will be designed uh, by Renzo Piano. Here, for example, we use the clipping method to take the 3D tile that are the uh, current view of the city. Uh, we remove the portion of the, that the master plan represented. We use Blender to uh, take the project and extrude the building. So it was really a low poly uh, line mesh 
But the, to give the idea of the project, this we found inside Map Store, it's helped also through the performance without to have the, for example, uh, the bin building with ICF and so on. And this was a, a way to use a view to represent before and after a project. So one could use the first view to represent the current situation, that's which the new one to see what's changing in the city. Here for the same uh, area, we use uh, always a model, uh, GLTF, taken from a beam file and uh, to show the structure underground. So here it's used by clipping the uh, removing portion of the terrain, removing portion of the 3D tiles, and inside adding the new uh, structure that will be built uh, behind and uh, to support the new, the new project. Here, instead, uh, there is uh, it's a lighthouse in Genova, and uh, in this case, uh, they want to. It, it's sort of, of the representation of the urban environment that changed from the past to the present. So, here, this hill uh, represents what was in the past. They reconstruct uh, a 3D tile with the hill uh, relief that was before the new construction. So, they want a comparison on uh, what was before and what it's now. In particular, the red uh, spot there represents uh, the position that was uh, the lighthouse before, and uh, this is the combination of the two. So here it's done inside the, the client, and uh, you can see these are two 3D tiles. One uh, that is the, the past, uh, it's the white one, and uh, is uh, the, the hill that was before, that was completely removed from the city. And uh, the new one uh, that we clip from the uh, red box before represents what it's now. So uh, looking also at the old image uh, that could be done uh, um, and added through the view from the description, one could have a comparison of what could be the state of uh, uh, the, the, the lighthouse in the past. A second example, and uh, it's related to the use uh, um, uh, so different level the city means, in this case, it would be underground. Uh, always in the city of Genova, we try to reconstruct, uh, I mean, to represent uh, the relation between the subway station and uh, the, um, the city itself. So to use these 3D tools uh, to cut a portion of the 3D tiles and show the stations. Uh, to do this, uh, here in this first image, we use a WMS layer with the yield shade that provided by your server to visualize what is the, uh, yeah, the, the relief of uh, the yield shade of uh, Genova. And then this uh, round cir uh, this circle are all the stations that currently there are on the, in the city. Uh, the interesting part here was to uh, use the um, let's say, representation and also use the animation in between the stations. So it could be, you see, the um, sort of story in between this that also we added some information that's come from Wikipedia and use this like uh, uh, cutting the station through a uh, radius, uh, I think was uh, five, uh, 150 meters, if I remember correctly. And uh, then below the red line, it's a model of the, uh, it's, um, it, it's not, in this case, the, the right representation, but the, here we wanted to represent the line through a 3D model. So we added this uh, GLTF model file that we generated through Blender. And on top of the 3D tile, it's possible also to highlight some portion with vector layer, WFS, or uh, GeoJSON shapefile that you can upload and uh, style them to highlight uh, some elements. For example, here at the roof of the station uh, or the station itself, where it's located and uh, where the line goes. You can see that it's, uh, this, uh, there is this transparency uh, be, uh, around, so we use that uh, um, tool to uh, allow to see through the uh, terrain, so underground. I was mentioning initially that it's possible also to use uh, multiple view and uh, uh, use this to um, facilitate and make more easier to measure. So if you clip some portion, you can focus on that and then use the map store tools that are available for each view to analyze some portion of the city. And here for the uh, cesium implementation inside map store, uh, we included these six uh, ways to measure the polyline, 
uh, the area, so it's possible also to uh, measure vertical surface, to get a quote of uh, align elemental features, and uh, to uh, take the distance from uh, the terrain. If you have, you can include also a layer terrain that uh, could come from uh, DTM, for example, and uh, then they use the 3D tiles on top and get in the distance in between, uh, for example, the roof of a building to the terrain. And this uh, gives the, uh, the, the measure tool gives a line of these uh, differences. Then we introduce for the 3D that it's not available in the, to the environment, uh, the angle measurement that, for example, they needed for the roof, uh, slope, um, the, the roof uh, inclination and slope, and we included also the slope that could be computed by applying three point, uh, uh, a polygon with three point. Uh, as I mentioned initially, the clipping is possible to uh, revert, so you can decide instead to show the station to cut a station and show what is behind. Now it's a, a simple uh, model, but you could represent the complete model of the station with all the levels and show what will be built uh, behind that. Uh, the last uh, example that we, we try to, to do, because this one is like an experiment, we use the maps that it was the Phosphor-G. And uh, we, we try to represent this using 3D uh, components that are available in Move Store, and uh, with the fact that with the map views we can include videos and images uh, inside this view. So here the idea is not to use the map views as a um, component that tells something uh, urban planning related or uh, in between component of the city, but to represent an event. So what changed in the city? Uh, often happens that uh, these events change the shape of the city, change the way that you access a city. So using step-by-step -step, uh, representation instead, a fixed representation of uh, a map, it could be uh, helpful in some uh, presentation or use cases. Here, for example, uh, the background map is an uh, open street map. And on top, we extracted also the building from OpenStreetMap, converted it to um, 3D model, GLTF. And uh, on top of those uh, layers, uh, you, you, here you can see that once you open the table of content, you see all the layers available. In this case, we had uh, this one that was representing the different uh, um, legends that we had inside. So the, a red building, that it's blue, but it's the red building, and uh, all the accommodation and restaurant uh, that was represented there. So it could be used also as static component. Here, uh, I want to highlight the fact that if you add models uh, that are, have a white material, that you usually in the 3D uh, software, there is the possibility to apply material, and it's uh, completely white, you could apply colors directly through the uh, map source style editor. So this allows you to have, uh, to change then finally your preference uh, on the final visualization that you want. And uh, in this case, the views uh, was so sort of a navigation in between those elements to represent what was there. So, yeah, one minute. Uh, thank you.